Amen. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20, it says, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ be, be reconciled to God. Let me show you that for that first. We're going to focus on the first part in verse 20. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. I want you just to have a focus right there. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. I just want you to focus right there, okay? Because that's where we're going to be. Um, we're going to be taking a little journey with that. And also, when I go in the book of Acts later, you will have the understanding. You'll see why. Because this topic, what we're talking about, is is diplomatic immunity. That's what we are talking about. That's what we are addressing. Diplomatic immunity. Okay? So diplomatic immunity, what is that? Diplomatic immunity. Diplomatic immunity is a status granted to a diplomat that exempts them from the laws of a foreign jurisdiction. Let me repeat that. Diplomatic immunity is a status granted to a diplomat that exempts them from the laws of a foreign jurisdiction. So what are examples of that? I'll give you examples. I'll take one out of Hollywood and I'll take one out of real life. Out of Hollywood, there was a movie, and some people remember the movie starring Danny Glover as well as Mel Gibson. There was a movie called Lethal Weapon some years ago. For those of you that remember that movie, you could just say amen. If you don't remember that movie, that is fine. In that movie, there was a case of the bad guys. The bad guys, there were some bad men. They were from another country, and they were committing crimes in America. And these men were from another country. And although these men from, were from another country, they had diplomatic immunity, meaning they were aligned with the government of the other country. And because they were aligned with the government from the other country, and they went through the proper protocols with the United States government, these men who were high officials from the other country, they had diplomatic immunity. So they were not, they were not, uh, they, they could not be arrested. They could not have, they were not under the normal laws as an American citizen, as someone living in America. They were not under the normal laws. Okay, they had diplomatic immunity. But the problem was in that movie, those men were also criminals. Nobody knew it, but they were criminals. They were into all kind of illegal activity. They were criminals. So they would commit crimes under night. They would do all kind of crimes. They would smuggle money and, do, and smuggle drugs and weapons. They would do all these big time crimes and smuggling billions of dollars through the illicit drug trade and guns and stuff. But because they had diplomatic immunity, they knew if they were gonna get caught in America, they could not really get arrested. The police would have to let them go. So when the man got it caught, the big boss, when he got caught, he quickly said to the police officer, he laughed in the police officer's face. He laughed in the police officer's face and said, diplomatic immunity. He said it with a big smile on his face, diplomatic immunity. Because the officer knew he could not put the handcuffs on him. The officer knew if even if he did put the handcuffs on him, they would have to let him go immediately. And that way the criminal would have enough time to get out of the United States, to jump on a plane and leave to another country. He would have enough time to do that. This is diplomatic immunity. Let me receive, so I'm gonna say the definition again, now that I gave you a, a little jog in your, in, in your mind about that. The, the definition for diplomatic immunity is a status granted to a diplomat that exempts them from the laws of a foreign jurisdiction. So why did I have you read that? Why did I have you read that in 2 Corinthians? Well, the definition of an ambassador, the definition of an ambassador is an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. Let me repeat that again. The definition of the word ambassador is an accredited diplomat sent by a country as its official representative to a foreign country. So when, I, when Paul is telling you we are ambassadors of Christ, I want you to please get the understanding. You are under another government. You are under another jurisdiction. The normal laws do not normally apply to you. The normal laws of nature do not normally apply to you. The normal laws of the land do not always apply to you. So you as a Christian, you as a believer, you as a citizen of the kingdom of God, you have to understand that because the enemy knows these things. 
But if you as the believer, if you don't know these things, he will exploit the fact that you don't know it. He will take advantage of you if you don't know your rights. So that's why it's important for us as Christians, as believers, to understand that we have diplomatic immunity. We have diplomatic immunity in different ways, in different laws, in different situations. We have diplomatic immunity. Let me give you an example of diplomatic immunity, how deep this thing goes. Just recently, a week or two ago, in Florida, down in Miami, where I used to live, where I used to reside, in Miami, Florida, a young man, he was 19 years old, riding on a motorcycle through crowd and through traffic, and there was a party scene and atmosphere, and the police told him to slow down, and he was rudely going out, in and out of the traffic and stuff, and the police told him, they demanded that he gets off the motorcycle. And he just waved his hand at the police officer, he said a few kind words and kept going where he wanted to go. And sure enough, with his motorcycle, he then, well, one of the police officers jumped in front of him and said, stop! And he just ran over the police officer, ran him over, broke the police officer's leg. So the other police officers quickly and jumped in and apprehended the young man because the young man tried to run and get away. When they apprehended the young man, the young man, he started saying he's diplomatic immunity. And the police officers were kind of questioning it. They're looking at, what? Who, who is this kid? And then the kid argues because his father happens to be a diplomat. His father happened to be a diplomat from another, another country. So the young man was trying to be wise. He was trying to be clever. He was trying to use the fact that there was some diplomatic immunity status that you couldn't arrest him. He doesn't have to listen to your rules. So this became a big outrage amongst the police down in Florida as well as in the community in South Florida. Because had that been my son, had that been my friend Pastor Jared's son, well, I, had to, I hate to tell you the truth of what would have happened. Had it been a young black teenager to run over the police officer with the motorcycle, what do you think would have happened? That young man would have been beaten, would have been arrested, and dare I say he may have been shot and killed by the police. He may, have, he may not have made it to the police station in time. But because this young man was of a different status, the police were very cautious on how they treated him. They were very cautious. They had to sit back and wait and say, wait, 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 hold up. We, we can't just beat him. We can't shoot him. We can't, we can't treat him anyway. Let's be careful. Let's find out who this young man is. So they went and did some of the research. They quickly brought him to the station. The young man had his call. They called the lawyers, called his father. And the police, they had the lawyer came in and they quickly took the young man out of the police station. Mind you, he just ran over a police officer with a motorcycle after the police officer told him to stop the vehicle. This was serious. It created great outrage in South Florida. But now here's the, th the catch. He was right before he left the country because he was crying, he was saying diplomatic immunity and his father was saying diplomatic immunity. So they were gonna quickly try to get him out of the country, get him out of the United States so he would not have to face prosecution. So he wouldn't have to go to jail or prison. They quickly were gonna try to get him on the plane. When they did a little bit of research, the young man's father was indeed working for the diplomat. The young man's father was working for the diplomat. He was the assistant for the diplomat. But he was not the diplomat. He did not have the official diplomatic immunity. So right before the kid could get on that plane and be whisked back to his country, the police down in Florida, the Miami police, quickly snatched him again. Said, uh-uh, you coming to us. So now he's gonna have to serve some real jail time because his father was an assistant. He was not the diplomat, he was just the assistant. Brothers and sisters, hear what I'm telling you today. We have many people in the body of Christ. We have many believers, many Christians, and then we have family members and friends. They think they're going to get into heaven by our virtues. By the relationship with you or me, brother, well, because I'm 
Pastor Jared's brother. I'm Pastor Jared's cousin. Well, because he's a man of God and he serves the Lord and I'm his cousin, I'm his brother, I'm his sister, I'm good with God too. I'm going to get into heaven too. Surely when I die and leave the earth and I come before the Lord, I'm going to say, well, you see, that's my brother. That is my cousin, Pastor Jared. So you have to let me in too. He's my father. He's my uncle. You have to let me into heaven too. There's people going to go before the Lord and say, oh, that's Pastor Fisher. Oh, well, because Pastor Fisher is my mother or Pastor Fisher is my cousin. Pastor Fisher is my friend. You have to let me into heaven too, Lord. And, then, and I'm, I'm a diplomat. And no, 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 brother. Oh, no. The diplomatic immunity will apply to them. The diplomatic immunity will apply to the person covered in that blood, covered in the blood of Jesus. That's where that diplomatic immunity will go to. That's where they will be immune from prosecution. Because diplomats, under diplomatic immunity, you are immune from prosecution in that foreign land. This is a very, very interesting thing. The diplomatic immunity. It is very interesting. and We have to watch how this thing is used. Because in the case of that young man in Florida, he found out that his father was close to the government. He worked for the government. But he was not an official diplomat. His father found out the hard way. So now he's going to be going to jail. This happens when we, we can watch a diplomat sometimes in traffic. People don't know that. When you go through New York City, in New York City we have a place called the United Nations. The United Nations, as you know, is a place where all the leaders from the other nations, they all meet. They all meet at the United Nations. So they all get there and they have meetings and they talk and they have, they have meetings concerning their government and their relationship with the other countries. They discuss trade, they discuss policies. You know, when, when COVID came, a lot of the meet leaders met up at the United Nations. They were discussing how are we gonna navigate this COVID situation? How, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna make trade with each other? What are we gonna do? And as they got together and they, and they got all these things together, they, they understood that they also had diplomatic immunity. Because the diplomatic community in New York City, they had very strict laws. Very strict laws and mandates were put in uh, during the time of COVID. You had to have a vaccine. You had to take the vaccination to go into certain buildings and certain places in New York City. But under that guideline for diplomatic immunity, even though it applied for all of New York City where you had to have the vaccine to go into certain buildings, because they were foreign diplomats, those foreign diplomats can quickly, can easily go into the building and conduct business. Some of them didn't wear masks, some of them were not vaccinated because they were under diplomatic immunity. The rules for New York City did not apply to them. They were able to come in and leave as they felt. We notice, brothers and sisters, but some people don't take notice, that is what happens with a lot of the angels. The angels of God, the angels of God are under diplomatic immunity. When Daniel was praying and he was praying, and he had the 21 day prayer and he had to go and deal with who? The prince of Persia. The prince of Persia, the Bible lets us know that was the principality, the ruling principality of that area. Anything that goes, any trade, any demonic spirits, any spells, any incantations, any witchcraft, any voodoo, any of those things had to go through the prince of Persia. He had to hear it first while he's sitting there. He's the ruling principality of that that area to this day it had to go through him and guess what when the angel came when Daniel prayed and the angel came the angel was a foreign diplomat the angel was had diplomatic immunity the angel just went up to the prince of Persia and just pushed him out the way because he had diplomatic immunity he's going in to go deal with his citizen because the citizen of a foreign government named Daniel was right there Daniel also had diplomatic immunity so his prayers could not be hindered he was praying and praying so eventually his prayers had to go through to the kingdom of God he's praying and praying God God had to hear his prayers. His prayers were not blocked because Daniel had diplomatic immunity himself. Because he had diplomatic immunity himself, the government of God had to hear Daniel's prayers. And the government had to respond because that is their diplomat. Daniel was their ambassador. The government has to respond. 
Do you know when you see those things on TV, when there's a great commotion in another country, Example, when, when the United States lets, left Afghanistan, when the United States left Afghanistan, as well as Great Britain, when they pulled out of Afghanistan, it, you guys remember that scene some years ago when people were trying to run on the runway and all those things. The United States government, they sent in planes to get their citizens, to get their people. The Great Britain, UK, the United Kingdom, they sent in planes and stuff and they got their people, their citizens, their diplomats, their ambassadors. They pulled them all out of Afghanistan. Afghanistan. South Africa's government did the same thing. The Canadian government did the same thing. Anybody who was their, per pe their people, they took them out. They sent planes and rescue teams to get their people out. The government Afghanistan had to wait they had to wait. They, the United States government, as well as the British government, they set up guns and military, all these things. They had them all pointed out, and they let them know, we're getting out our citizens. They had that airport rounded up and blocked off. They had guns, missiles, everything, and tanks just pulling their people out. Their people, the Afghanistan people had to wait. The Afghanistan military had to wait because those people had diplomatic immunity. Once they pulled them all out, then the Afghanistan government said, okay, now we're going to take back over. Diplomatic immunity, my brothers and sisters, that is something we have to really, really watch it. So when there's something going on, you have to start praying, looking to heaven, looking to God, and start wondering, Lord, Lord, I'm your child. I'm part of your family. I'm a child of God. I'm covered by the blood. I know who Jesus is. You have to start screaming to God, letting them know you have diplomatic immunity. When sickness hits your body, you don't just take that sickness. You speak to that sickness. You speak to that situation over your body. You say, body, I have diplomatic immunity. I am covered by the blood of Jesus. I am covered by the blood. I speak to this virus. I command you to leave my body in the name of Jesus Christ. I am covered by the blood. I am under diplomatic immunity. Poverty. I command you to leave me in the name of Jesus Christ. I am covered by the blood. I am covered by diplomatic immunity. All sickness. Leave this body. I am covered by the blood. I am covered by diplomatic immunity. I'm under a different government. I'm under a different jurisdiction. Brothers and sisters, I remember a, a testimony Pastor Fisher told me some years ago. And I, under, I laugh at it because she understood the diplomatic immunity. It doesn't apply to the non-believer. It applies to the believers. When she went to an airport one day and she didn't have the, the funding for the ticket... The ticket was not paid for. She did not have the funding. She did not know how she was going to make the trip. But the Spirit of God told her to go to the airport anyway. And she went to the airport. And she walked up to the ticket counter. Now, mind you, she has no reservation, has no money, did not pay for the ticket. But as she walks up to the ticket counter, she gives them her name. She gives them her driver's license. They look in the computer. And they said, oh, here goes a ticket for you, Miss Fisher. And they give her a plane ticket. Brothers and sisters, that is one example of diplomatic immunity. For everyone else who was not a believer, who did not have that type of faith, for anyone else, the airline would say, yes, this ticket is going to cost you X amount of thousands of dollars. But when you understand who you are in Christ, you are walking under diplomatic immunity. The rules change for you. You don't have to abide by the same rules of everybody else. The rules totally change for you. I've been in that situation myself. I've seen it myself. I've walked through it myself where I knew because I was walking under God's diplomatic immunity, I knew that I was going to be treated differently. Everybody else might be treated one day, one way, but I knew I would be treated differently. And this is where we have to walk as believers. We have to understand this. 
In the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 19, which I told you to have a finger in earlier, in Acts chapter 19, there was something interesting that happened. And a lot of people don't understand that this was also a simple a case of diplomatic immunity. In Acts chapter 19, I told you to have a finger there, but if you're not there, that's okay. Acts chapter 19, verse 13. This was Paul walking through and he had an interesting situation. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Siva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of, out of that house naked and wounded. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the very simple of that story. That wicked spirit knew who Paul was. That wicked spirit knew who Jesus was. But that wicked spirit did not know who these people were. He did not know who they were. Because that wicked spirit understood diplomatic immunity. He knew that he could not touch Paul. He knew he could not touch Jesus. But these sons of Siva, they had no diplomatic immunity. They were not covered by the blood of Jesus. And because he did not see that blood of Jesus on them, there was no diplomatic immunity. Therefore, he can go ahead and attack them and destroy them. Because they were under his jurisdiction. Paul and Jesus were on a different jurisdiction. Brothers and sisters, even wicked spirits know this thing. They know this better than the believers today in the church. They understand this thing with diplomatic immunity. They can see in the spirit who is part of that government, who is part of the kingdom of God. They can see it, and they can see who is not part of that government. They can see that as well. There's so many times when people see these things, when people see in different situations, they can see these things and they try to figure it out. It's because, brothers and sisters, you're under a different government. Be encouraged today. You are under a different government. For the believers in Jesus Christ, you are under diplomatic immunity. When things happen, as things will happen in this country and other countries, you are under diplomatic immunity. You have a different protection. You have a government that will come save you and come help you. You will have a government that will provide for you. You will have a government that will see to your needs. You have a government that will see to all your bills are paid. You have a government that will see to that your health is taken care of. You have a government that will see restoration in your family. You have a government that will give reconciliation with loved ones and friends. You have a government that will see to it and take care of you. That is the government you are under. So as we sit and as we pray and as we get out of here for the coming week, I want you just to understand and know you are under a different government. You have diplomatic immunity. You should be encouraged of who you are in Christ. Be encouraged of who you are in Christ and your standing in Christ. Do not be as one of those brothers, just like the sons of Siva, where you're questioning or you're pretending that you have a, a, a diplomatic immunity. Where you're just like the young man who I talked about in Florida, where he thinks because his, his friend or his relative, his father, that he also has diplomatic immunity. No. In the natural world, this is how it works, and it works in the spiritual realm too. Those people down in New York City at the United Nations, each one of them, they have to apply to get diplomatic immunity. Let me say that again. Every one of those people out of New York City at the United Nations and as these government leaders, they have to apply to get diplomatic immunity. We, the Christians, we do the same. We have to apply the blood we have to apply the blood. We have to apply the blood of Jesus. That's what gives us the diplomatic immunity. Walking with Christ gives us the diplomatic immunity. Amen.
So, Father, we just hold up the people. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us here. We thank you for the word, Lord, that you gave us today, Lord. We thank you for the fellowship, almighty God. We thank you. We thank you, O God of Israel, for the diplomatic immunity you have given your servants. We thank you, almighty God. Lord, we ask that you continue to be with us throughout the week as we leave this place. Continue to keep your angels around us, Lord. The angel of the Lord encamps around the righteous. Lord, keep your diplomatic immunity upon your servants, almighty God. Lord, we ask that you just continue, almighty God, to let the blood of Jesus speak on our behalf. Lord, we thank you, Father, for the blood that was shed on Calvary. We give you thanks, almighty God, that we can exert diplomatic immunity in the face of the enemy. We can exert diplomatic immunity in the face of the world. We can exert diplomatic immunity even on our job at the workplace. We can exert diplomatic immunity when we're facing hardship, almighty God. We can exert diplomatic immunity when things don't look right. We can exert diplomatic immunity when people talk about us. We can exert diplomatic immunity when we are falsely accused. We can exert diplomatic immunity when we are slandered. We can exert diplomatic immunity when the, the, the bank starts acting up, when the landlord is acting up, when the all these different things start to come upon us, Lord. We can exert the diplomatic immunity you have given us, almighty God. Lord, I pray over every listener, over their bodies, almighty God, whether they're here or overseas. Lord, we pray right now, Father God, over their bodies, Lord. We ask that you give them the strength as well to pray with us in agreement, almighty God. We speak over their bodies right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We say be healed in Jesus' name. We rebuke every spirit off of them that's harming their health. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. We say right now you have diplomatic immunity to sickness in the name of Jesus Christ. We say be healed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for the immunity we're given. Father, we speak over everyone who's going through a financial problem. We speak over their wallets, over their bank accounts. We speak over it right now in Jesus' name. We say you have diplomatic immunity over your finances. Your government will supply. Our God shall supply all our needs. Father, we ask you will just take care of them, Lord. Father, we ask that you just apply the blood of Jesus over their finances right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We rebuke every spirit of poverty and lack off the people. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. We call forth the diplomatic immunity from heaven. We call it forth upon the finances right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We speak over their finances. We say multiply right now in the name of Jesus Christ. For every person facing legal problems and facing court issues, we speak over them right now, Lord, before they go to the courtroom this week, almighty God. We we speak diplomatic immunity over their situation, almighty God. Let the judge rule in their favor, almighty God. Let the judge throw the case out, almighty God, because they see diplomatic immunity upon your servant, almighty God. Let them see the diplomatic immunity upon your child, almighty God, that they will not give the child the normal sentencing, almighty God, but that we decree and declare favor over that person right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, overburning everyone who's going to work this week, Lord, no matter what's going on at their job, no matter how much their job is threatening to fire them or terminate them, Almighty God, we declare diplomatic immunity right now over them, Almighty God. Let them have diplomatic immunity over them at the workplace, Almighty God. Every attempt to fire them or terminate them, we rebuke that right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We cry and we plead the blood of Jesus over you at your workplace in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we grant them, we say let them have in the name of Jesus diplomatic immunity. We call it forth for your ambassadors. Your word says we are ambassadors of Christ, almighty God. The ambassadors on the earth are always taken care of, almighty God. So we know if the ambassadors on earth are taken care of, you, Heavenly Father, our Jehovah Jireh, you will take care of us. We thank you, almighty God, for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're going to do, and we thank you for the diplomatic immunity upon your servants. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah.